Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Brother Whisperer radio show, coming to you live from the Congaree National Park in beautiful South Carolina, USA. We're going to be discussing the wonderment, the beauty, and the awesomeness of our beautiful, beautiful feathered companions. We're also going to have fantastic guests on to share their beautiful moments, experiences, and perhaps maybe a little bit of help and advice to come your way to make your relationship between you and your bird so much better. We'll be right back. IQ Air, the number one rated air purifier worldwide. Someone asked me once, how much do you really love your parrots? I replied, more than life itself. Then I was asked, do you have a clue as to how much more sensitive the lungs of a bird are than a human being? To be honest with you, I had not considered this. I researched some of the leading brands, such as Austin Air, Rabbit Air, which by the way, we have used in the past. Then I discovered the IQ Air Health Pro Plus. I kid you not, within one hour, the quality of the air inside my sanctuary was totally awesome. Please allow me to simplify this for you. The filtering process of IQ Hair Health Pro Series Plus blocks and holds the super tiny particles, the ones that you cannot see with the naked eye. These are the bad boys that pass right through the filters of so many other purifiers. These particles are the ones that are deadly to you and your companion bird's respiratory system. With all due respect, you may think the current purifier systems you are using are working adequately for you and your companion birds. Please, stop fooling yourself. Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, etc., including all brands coming out of China, are simply a waste of money. Bottom line is this. My companion birds are worth it. My family is worth it. Did I happen to mention that IQ Health Pro Plus systems are the number one choice by doctors who recommend them to their asthma patients as well? I care truly stands behind their Health Pro Plus series purifiers. 100% guaranteed against any and all defects for 10 years. If they fail due to defects, IQ Air will fix or replace it for free. This includes everything. All you need to do is register your IQ Health Pro Plus series purifier within 30 days of purchase to be eligible for their 10 year limited warranty. Please call 1-866-488-1918. That's 1-866-488-1918 to talk to an indoor quality expert. IQ Air 10 year limited warranties only apply to IQ Air products purchased in North America, directly from IQ North America Incorporated, or from an IQ Air authorized dealer. Use the code IQ53182, that's IQ53182, to get an awesome 10% discount on your purchase. One more thing, just so you know, we are not receiving one single dime regarding any sales from IQ Air. We negotiated this code for you. This is also for all dog, cat, and pocket pet people as well. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to your show. I am Michael Cox, your host this evening. Please welcome Sarah Fonda Walter. Sarah is an extraordinary person who does incredible work for the avian community. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Michael. It's really nice to have you here with us tonight. Uh, would you first of all share with our listeners what part of the planet do you hail from? Well, I'm currently in Sacramento. California, which is considered Northern California, but I was born and raised in San Francisco. Oh, cool. Okay. And what is it like? Uh, what is it like today? Currently, it's pretty hot. Um, but overall, it's a really nice area, nice community, nice part of the world, and we have a pretty strong bird community here, so um, I really like it here. Oh, awesome. Okay. Well, I also want to let you guys know something, okay? First of all, Sarah is a very, very dear friend of mine. I just love the dickens out of her. And Aww. she is the one who runs 
pretty much and takes care of an extraordinary store just stuff full with every kind of toy you can imagine awesome awesome birds and you know what how about this sarah why don't you share with our listeners what is parrot planet all about is really about so many different things. It's a really special and unique um, environment. Um, when I first walked in the door, um, I used to volunteer there. I just couldn't stay away. I had always been a parrot lover um, and always had parrots, and I just was drawn into that place. Um, it's just a very, very unique, um, it's a retail venue for um, all things parrots. Um, but I think what makes it different is that we don't really like the idea of birds spending days and days and hours and hours um, in cages. So we have more of a philosophy that um, we like to have our birds out on um, appropriate stands for them that are comfortable for them with their food and veggies and water and with um, plenty of interaction with really, really wonderful visitors, customers, children, a lot um, of other bird lovers, people who are new to birds. Um, so our philosophy is a little different in that we like our birds out and being interacted with it. We just feel that it's good for people and it's good for the parrots. Um, we offer, excuse me, just about everything you can think of related to birds. Um, we offer services like grooming, um, boarding, um, classes. Um, it, it's kind of become a local hub for people who really, really um, love birds on many different um, levels. We also um, run heavily on primarily volunteers. So we have a lot of volunteers that will spend one to two days a week in our store interacting with our birds, our babies, our customers, and, and helping out because it's mutually beneficial and they really enjoy their time um, being in that space um, with with the parrots. And it's also more of a unique place because we do raise um, a handful of babies ourselves. I do a lot of the hand feeding myself. I currently have eight little ones here um, with me at home in the brooder. They get to go everywhere with me because they... Um, are a little high maintenance at this age so <laughs> well what wait a minute hold on a second the, the little ones that you're raising basically what kind are they um right now i have two baby eclectus i have a uh, white ear condor um i have a canende and i have three little sun conures um and i think that's it for right now are their eyes open yet? Uh, most of them have their eyes open, yes. Um, and it's a really, really cute little stage that they're in. They're always happy to see me, and I'm happy to see them, even if it's 2 in the morning. Um, <laughs> so it's just it's, it's, it's part of the job that's just pretty spectacular and pretty amazing, and it's watching a little life grow. And just taking care of them um, I find incredibly enjoyable. Um, and it's just a great process, and we also operate under a philosophy of uh, baby-led weaning. Uh, we don't force wean our parrots, and our parrots are notorious in our store for um, taking months and months to be weaned because we just don't believe in rushing them and the importance of them imprinting and bonding with their first human, so to speak, is, is critical in my opinion. So that piece of it has to really be taken seriously, and they grow up, you know, in, in a home environment, um, and then they kind of move on and graduate and are at the store and happy to see all the people. And um, so it's, it's a really fun part um, of my job. Um, but at the same time, we also help other other people and other birds that aren't babies. Um, I don't like to call most of them rescues because most of them just need a second chance, a second home. Um, owners pass away. Um, things happen and they're displaced. And so... We're always happy to call upon our other customers who like to take in birds that are older and maybe past puberty, which is a good thing. So um, we do just a variety of um, different things pertaining to parrots. Um, 
in, in the in the store. Um, we also have more in the last six months or so. Um, I've become more involved, and in, in the staff has too, with going out on search uh, missions. Um, we have a lot of parrots that escape, and that accidents happen, and they fly out. So, um, in our spare time for fun, we run around the Greater Sacramento area, um, helping our customers and and helping the average person um, locate, track, and, and get their bird. Um, oh, you know, so you're you're talking you're talking about your customers who their birds get away from them, and you guys go out and try to get their birds back. It's not birds that are escaping from Parrot Planet. No, they're not escaping from the store. They're they're essentially at home with their people, and, and one thing leads to the other, and they get outside or something spooks them, and um, even the clipboards can get into a low branch and climb a little bit. So we sometimes like to go out, and we like to help the 911 Parrot Alert group, and they will call upon us if somebody's in crisis locally. There's a macaw that's one of our past babies missing, and well, it doesn't matter who it is. We do like to go out since we are bird people. We... we want to help get birds out of trees and get them home so we just kind of it seems like dabble in just a little bit of of, of everything um that's, in the community that's totally store. that's totally awesome I, I i really really see i i know i didn't know that that you guys go and actually give other people a hand when their birds you know bless your heart yeah, um, yeah that part of it's just kind of a grassroots effort we all volunteer myself included to do it if the admins of the group say hey there's a bird missing in your area can you offer any help we generally can offer help if we can't we we will loan out cages give out food to good samaritans who also are finding birds on the streets believe it or not so it's, if there's a need and we can accommodate it because we're just a small mom and pop business we will you know make every effort um to, to do that and to help because we want to give back and it makes me feel good to help and i sure have appreciated the help um when i've needed it uh, pertaining to my own birds so that's fantastic that, that 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 is so that is so cool have you had a obviously and hopefully you answer yes on this question have you had a lot of success in helping people get their birds back Oh, absolutely. I feel that we have a really, really high success rate. You know, things don't always um, end the way we want them to, but more often than not, we are completely successful. Um, and, and, and this is people just in the community helping. I'm talking about neighbors that call and say, there's a parrot up here screaming. What do we do? So there's just a great community here locally in Sacramento where if, if parrot people need help, there's always somebody that's fascinated by that sound and those colors in that tree and so it takes a community to help and so we're successful because of the community at large i would say okay let me ask you this what are some of the techniques that you use to get one of these guys out of a tree now peeps listen up on this one because i've <laughs> I've, I've had a number of you over the years that have been my friends and are and are still my friends hopefully uh you know that had no people that where the birds have gotten away or maybe somebody saw it in a tree and all could you offer some suggestions in how someone might be able to retrieve a bird out of a tree that they see just different things that you guys have tried that you've seen that works that you'd like to share um, well a big part of it is Understanding flight, understanding how a bird flies, and how, in particular how a bird flies down, especially a bird who is not experienced. Um, and those birds tend to take a little bit longer figuring it out. They're not used to flying. Um, and so positioning is half the battle. Um, you have to position yourself and, and, and know how that bird flies down and does need to slow its wings. And then it, it's almost like a jet landing. So a lot of people think, well, I'm going to stand right under the bird so it can see me and it'll just kind of drop down to me or just kind of just shoot down more like maybe a falcon would. So realistically, with a lot of people and Good Samaritans and even owners of birds, um, they don't realize that you have to go quite a distance out, especially for a macaw. They really need a lot of room. So positioning is, is a big part of it. Um, coaxing the bird down with a variety of techniques pouring water from one bowl to the other that sounds familiar, like being given water in the morning, um, bringing their favorite foods and snacks. A lot of times people will put their bird cage down near where the bird is at with all the food and, and all the familiarity. Um, having another parrot with you is 
key and that has helped us so many times because a parent knows another parent um, and that's familiar and generally they will seek out where is that other parent that is where I want to be um, so but a lot of it is just um, if you know where the bird is that's that's the best case scenario not knowing where the bird is and tracking and trying to find the bird is where you then shift gears and rely heavily on apps like next door where the people are you know where the bird went missing the the parrot alert 911 group is is key every bird owner should be in that group on facebook those are the people that are getting the word out and it's a lot of times non-bird people that are calling or seeing this magnificent thing they've never seen in the tree before so there's just a variety of ways with baby birds you can coax them down you know perhaps with formula but um the wrong thing to do would be to throw objects at the bird to try to use a net and to call the fire department those things are going to spook the bird and ultimately chase the bird off to a location that may be worse or that you may not know where the bird lands. Um, and, and it's terrifying to a pet bird that gets out. They're generally not outside. They don't understand the car backfiring, um, the fire truck going back, or the other wild birds are, are overwhelming. So, Right, right. That's, so, you, so many factors. That, that's, br uh, that's brilliant about the, uh, the flight pattern, you know. I can see yeah. where a lot of people, you know, standing right underneath the tree. Come on, you know. Yeah, just come down. Fluffy, come on, just like drop right down in, into my... So really, really good logic there, peeps, okay? You see a bird, you know, stand just, back at a distance and give them some room to fly. If they, yeah. yeah, if they want to come down and see you. You mentioned that you guys also do classes. What are these classes like and who are they for? Well, we plan to do a class um, this summer, if I can find an eighth day in the week. Um, <laughs> I want to do a children's class with children because we have a lot of excited young children who they come in and their eyes are so big and bright. And those are, you know, future bird lovers right there. And that's important um, to the livelihood of aviculture. So we want to kind of foster the kids and do a class, you know, with pizza and let them have soda that their parents wouldn't normally let them and talk about birds. Um, we plan to start up again our uh, basic uh, bird 101 classes just for the first time um, bird owner or somebody who's new to birds. Um, so we just, and a lot of times we pull our customers, what do you guys want to learn about? Um, so we're open to doing classes on just about anything. We did a fabulous class about a year ago with Nina McNulty, who happens to be my mentor for free flight. And she came in and did just a basic class on recall training your indoor bird. Um, so we do things like that. Um, we hosted a falconer meetup. Okay, ho ho hold on, hold on just a second. Recall yeah. training, what is that all about? Uh, basically, uh, teaching your parrot to respond to a cue, which would be um, axle come, and then the bird would come to your uh, hand, would either hop, fly, or sometimes you can recall a bird and it can walk, because not all birds can fly. Some have broken wings, some don't fly. So you can recall the bird by giving it a simple cue, birdie here, birdie come, and then when they get there, you throw a party, give them their favorite treat, and you basically teach the bird that there may be times you need that bird to kind of come to your um, arm quickly. And so if you call the bird and it knows what you're asking of it and it's fun and enjoyable, then your bird has a new skill. And the skill can help your bird if it's outside for some reason, like we were just talking about. So okay. recall training is just having your bird come to you basically when called. Okay, but but recall. Okay, I I understand the concept, but there's a whole lot of peeps out there right now that are listening to this. So, and and some people have no clue at all of like where do you start and 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 right. you know and and what what is it? Could you kind of uh, capsulize, yeah. if you will, like the process, the beginning, and and the repetitiveness? I'm I'm sure is included here. And all and kind of guide people a little bit on how to be able to perhaps start working with their own birds to be able to do this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And there, there's a huge interest in our store about this because the work I do with my two green wings, and so it's it's great to see the customers excited and the birds excited. So basically, when I start my birds off, you know they're babies or 
um, even the babies that I raise, I, I'll train them a little bit in the same manner. But for what it basically looks like is I have just a simple, kind of like what you would call a tea stand, but it's a stand that I made. It's just basically a branch. It's nothing fancy. There's no toys. And if I place my birds on there and say, Axel, come, my bird, since he's fully flighted and will fly, he'll fly right to my hand with, with excitement. But the way you could start out at home with a bird that's even clipped, it could even be so much as trying to get the bird to step up, recalling to you where it maybe then hops. So a bird that maybe you're not familiar with, it's a bird that's new to your home, it's had trauma, whatnot. It's really important to build rapport and relationships slowly and gently and, and at the bird's pace. But a lot of birds really are enthusiastic because it's something fun and it's engaging and it's time with you. So basically, uh, with a bird that doesn't fly, you could you could have the bird walk to you. You can call your bird and, and ask him to come to you and give him a really nice reward that he only gets when you guys are doing the fun stuff. But for birds that are babies, maybe that, that, that are fully flighted, um, you would start by asking the bird to come and maybe just hop or even just step up. And then you maybe take a, a foot, a step back, and then maybe call the bird again. And once the bird understands, oh, when she says that, she means come on over, and then I get this really great kiss and hug from her, and I get this great pine nut. So it depends on, on what motivates the bird in order to do um, the recall training, the birds are motivated by different things. Some just, you know, want to be hugged and, and given attention and affection and verbal praise is super important. But a lot of birds really want the treat. Older birds are like, give me that snack and I'll do it. It almost sounds like you. human beings. Right. If you tell me to come over when you're having an ice cream party, I would be right over. <laughs> <laughs> so... Especially if you have the best ice cream on the planet and no one else did, I would always be coming over for ice cream. <laughs> so, oh, God. That's yeah, so it's just fun stuff. Just fun stuff you can do. That's amazing. How long has Parrot Planet been in business? Uh, five years next month. That's all? That's all. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Pete, yeah. I, I got to go. I went there and um, I actually had the honor of going there and, and, and meeting Sarah and some of the other wonderful people there, Dana and... Dana, you met Dana, yeah. Yeah, and uh, let's see, Stephen, and uh, of course, that's where uh, Francis came from, the, yeah. the uh, military macaw that uh, oh. is just an absolute... By the way, <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's doing awesome. He, co he comes out, you know, he comes out now, he'll run around the bed, on top of the bed and stuff like that, and he's fun he's able to walk now, you know, I mean, oh, walk wow. really well, you know, and um, he's, he's, he's doing, he's doing great, and he's, a, he's turned into a complete snuggle bug. He loves oh, to be nice. held, uh, Diane, he absolutely loves my wife, Diane. Oh, they, nice. they just, they snuggle, she can, she doesn't have to like go up to the, you know, his apartment and put a towel on him or anything yeah. like that to bring him out. He <laughs> just hops right on up, she carries him in, brings him into the bedroom, oh, puts nice. him on top of the, 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 the bedspread and, and he runs around and eats pistachios and bops his head around you know and like you say something okay. and it, you know he kind of turns his head and it's like he knows what you're saying you know and then the piece this yeah. guy's really old man he's a really yeah. old old soul old spirit but he he's he's doing fantastic but parrot planet when i walked in there initially i've never been in a store like that it's and, a zoo. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was like, it was, it was all just, it was, it, it blew me away because you guys, first of all, I don't go to bird shows. I don't go to, you know, places that, that, that offer birds for sale and stuff, your Petco and all of those kind of chain stores and stuff like that. I just don't go in there. I just don't go into those stores because if I do, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm going to get in really, really big trouble. But when I walked into Parrot Planet, I'm going like, oh my gosh. These guys are doing it right. All the all the birds are all out on the stands, as as Sarah said. You know, they're all totally friendly. And the cool thing that Sarah hasn't mentioned to you yet that I remember, and that is that she they allow the birds to pick the people. And mm -hmm. because the person will come up to the bird and they can kind of see how they're gonna work out with one another. And but bottom line is if the bird is like heads over heels. 
with this particular couple or whatever, fine. If the bird seems to be a little skittish or standoffish or this isn't going to really work, you know, then the bird's not going to go with these people. And I remember you guys sharing that with me. If somebody comes in there, they don't know bat, whatever. They don't know anything right. about birds. And they go, oh, I want, does it talk? You know, when somebody walks in, <laughs> it, it, it come, comes up to me and says, hey, you know, the birds you have, the, the first question they ask me, uh, do any of them talk? And it's like, I just want to go, God, next time you want to grow a brain, would you please do it around somebody else? But these guys will not sell or offer a bird to anyone that they don't feel can take care of the bird and that the bird actually wants to go with. Mm -hmm. I'm correct in that, right? Oh, 100% correct. And I will say I'm not always the most popular because of that, but I'm there for the animals i'm there for the birds and so they're my priority and if i have to choose who's going to be upset at the end of the day i'm going to choose for the human to be upset because i know these birds they're with us a long time some of them and i can't in good faith send them somewhere where something's just not right the bird is not responding positively to the person um i've had people get you know upset and i understand but my obligation is to the bird, and, and, and so sometimes the humans will be upset that we say, no, this bird is not a good fit for you. Um, we just, it's, it's what we have to do, um, and, and it's just kind of the way it is, and I think that a lot of bird people are the same way. that They've got to just kind of see that connection, and believe me, there have been birds that I said, wow, this bird's been here a year and a half, and it's not connected with anyone. And then the next day, somebody comes in, and the bird is in love, and it is so obvious. It's so obvious because birds are great about their body language. It's not hard to tell when a bird is not happy um, or when a bird is happy. It's pretty, it's obvious. You can really see it. So we just look for that, and most of us have been around birds a very long time, me, my entire life. So we can kind of pick up on that. And so we just try to advocate for our babies and for the birds. And we really want there to be a connection. Francis connected with you immediately and started doing his famous um, head bobbing that, that he does as a military. And I think he was saying grandpa, but it's, it's very obvious. And then someone else would try to walk in his English show and he would try to, to, to hurt them. So it was pretty clear who, you know, when he liked somebody. So, it, I just think it's really important to put our own needs and wants aside and, and just advocate for the, for the bird and, and, and let them be happy in their home um, for a long time. So That's totally fantastic. You know what? The, the, the only part about the job, not job, the, the quest, the calling that you have, and by the way, I, my opinion, you're doing more than a fantastic job at it. And that is the hard part for me would be doing exactly what you're doing now, for instance, of the eight babies that you got in your home and you're raising them and you're feeding them and all of this and you're getting them prepared to go into homes. Doesn't that kind of, for me, I, I, I would really have a hard time doing that, giving the birds, you know, to somebody else. You know, I mean, I just, that's got to be an incredible struggle. How do you overcome that or do you? Not very gracefully, I'll be honest. A, a, a scarlet macaw um, that was uh, hatched in a good friend's living room, um, I ended up, um, that bird came to me, and it was like six and a half, seven weeks from the nest. The parents took good care of it up until then. And our macaws tend to hang around six, nine months a year sometimes. We just we let them grow up as slow or fast as they want. And he went home on Saturday, and... I just couldn't help myself, started crying, and I was very upset, and, and the other um, person that helped me raise this bird, her and I were hugging him and, and crying, but we were able to hand him off to customers we already know. They have another bird from us. Um, they're a wonderful, wonderful young family, and um, they have come to visit this bird many times, and um, it, it's just it's important to be able to hand the bird off to somebody you know and like and that you can trust because we spend so much time i mean i spend so much time with these babies that handing them off is 
probably one of the most difficult things I ever have to do, in particular the macaws. I just, they're with us longer, so then it's, it's magnified, it's harder. But I generally will cry, um, sometimes for a few days. The staff, we all cry, um, but we're able to see the babies. Most of the macaws I've raised, they come in all the time. I see them a lot. So the nice part about the store is that people still come see us, and we see all our babies, and when we see them, we are just having a good day. But sometimes um, that's kind of what happened with Axel. <laughs> I raised him, and he was supposed to be sold three years ago. So sometimes one doesn't get away, and you have to keep that one that just there's maybe an incredible bond or something just different. Um, but it's, it's very, very hard, and that's why I always have to be a part of who gets my babies. I have to know, and in order to sleep at night, I have to know who has them and who's loving them and, and to see them and get updates. And so it, it, that part is made a little bit easier because of the people. The people that most of our babies go to, we know them already, and they're wonderful people. And so that's what we you know hope and pray for and, and we don't just go away when they go home most of them call me day or night they all have my phone number and i'm there to help them if they've got issues they're not sure what to do um just as you know as long as i'm there i'm happy to help these people at any time um, in particular with my babies but anybody else who has a parrot as well that's awesome okay there you go peeps i don't know of any store quote toy store, bird store, all of it, that has a group of people that do it like this. And that's the main reason, to be honest with you guys, of why I begged Sarah <laughs> to be on this show, because she is extraordinary. And Dana, who also runs the store, is extraordinary. And they're volunteers. I met a lot of them when I went yeah. there. They're just wonderful, wonderful, beautiful people, and they shine. And you can walk in, man, and you just feel the energy. When I walked in there, I'm just going like, wow, man, this isn't a store that sells birds. This isn't just a store that sells toys. It's magical in here. All the birds you could see, their their eyes are just twinkling, you know, and, and their plumage and all of that is just, everything is just totally killer perfect man and i'm going like this is so cool and then to meet francis you know francis is in this big cage over in the corner and he's just kind of like you know he's looking around and his face gets all red and i just dropped i remember i dropped down on my knees yeah on yeah, the floor yeah. and said hey come here man and he, you know he was so happy that day he's, he's a cool bird and he was well loved and he just He's so incredibly old, but he's just a great bird. But, you know, the, the piece I like about the store, too, is that we have, like, a living room. Um, there's a couple benches and a tree, and, and just uh, we have a lending library for the kids. Like, um, we have a volunteer from the library that brings us all the bird-related books. And so we then check them out to kids or adults, anybody who wants to read. Um, we like to encourage reading, especially about birds. Um, but it's kind of cool to have the living room because on Saturdays, I don't have a lot of customers, I don't even want to call them customers, they're more friends, um, they hang out, some of them four hours, five hours, we're only open like eight hours, some of my customers are there the whole day, and they're hanging out with other customers, and they're solving their bird problems, and we, we just have people kind of hanging out, and, and it, it's like a hub where you can go for help, and um, it's a cool vibe in there because you can hang out, we we just will zip past you, you know, and um, sometimes we'll have coffee out, sometimes we'll have snacks or somebody makes cupcakes. And so it's it's more like a place where you can go and be with others of your own kind because, you know, us bird people can be different. And so <laughs> you think, <laughs> go ahead. Just a little. And so it's fun to be with other people who don't think it's bizarre that you're talking about birds nonstop. You know, they don't go, what? I don't relate to you. They're as excited to tell you their stories, and a lot of good work is done there just amongst the customers. Um, and I see customers educating other customers, and so it's just a cool place. We have a cargo net on the side um, of some lattice, and there's usually a macaw or two up there climbing, chewing the wall, 
Um, we have birds just kind of doing a variety of things. I have a 16 foot flight. My birds are flying back and forth. Um, and actually I should mention my macaws do come out and do little free flying things in, we're not outside, we're inside the store. And if there's a whole room full of kids, sometimes I'll pull one, if not two out and let them kind of show some of their, um, little, little tricks they like to do. And, and, and they're great showmen. They love to show off. So it's kind of a cool place to be because you get an up close and personal look at some really rare and unique and just cool birds. Um, you know, some of the tricks that they do that they like to do, uh, like what? Um, let's see. Well, you know, they're of course recall trained, so no matter where I'm at in the store, if I call them, they'll, they'll be coming right over. Usually, both of them. Um, if I ask them to show me their pretty wings, um, they'll show them to me. They actually do a nonverbal cue for pretty wings as well, and I kind of give them a gesture, and then they just do it. They do their pretty wings. Um, one of them can do a high five. Um, Axel can jump up from the floor. Um, if I tell them, go to your perch or meet me at the perch, they'll both go on over and meet me at the perch. Mm. Um, yeah, they like to um, speak. Um, I, I didn't train them to speak, but when I saw how much they loved it and how much they liked mimicking me, um, sometimes um, I can ask them to you know, say something that, that I want them to say, and they'll say it back to me, and they laugh like me, and um, they just... They're entertaining, and people are like, wow, I didn't know that a bird could learn to uh, stand on this side of the perch if you gave them the cue to kind of over here. And, and people are amazed, and now people are getting excited, and now they're showing their birds uh, how to roll on their back. I have customers that taught their birds to play dead. Um, so you do all kinds of cool tricks. So if you show people what you could maybe do with your birds, then it motivates and excites them to do it, and then they go, wow. My relationship is getting better with my bird, and my bird's a little more tired at night now, which means, guess what? Less screaming, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I'm all about less screaming. So the more activity, the more fun, and the more energy these birds can exert, it's fun for them. They don't understand that it's actually, in my mind, a little bit of training, because for me it's fun, too. Um, but the kids get excited to see them flying around the store or flying to me and, um, you know, do, I can tell them, come on over here and they'll come over. And so it's just, it's just a fun, unique place, um, that you can go and see up close and personal what people are doing with their birds and, and the relationship they have and just how neat it is. It's just, it's not like anything else. That's awesome. Yes, you're right. Learning should be fun. Learning should be fun, and learning is key with birds and education. So that I'd like to see the store shift eventually uh, more focused on that um, piece of it because that's the piece I enjoy. Um, if you want to know something and I might know it, I'm more than happy to share it, um, and, and it's beneficial because you tell someone else and someone else, and then we're all learning, and so it's a great, powerful thing. So what is, Now, the website for Parrot Planet is parrotplanet.com. Is that correct? Yes, and it's currently under construction, but yes, that is the website. We have a very active, though, and fast-moving Facebook, too, um, which, which a lot of our customers are, are on there and checking us out and seeing what we're doing. And we're just Parrot Planet on Facebook. Um, but that's another good resource, too. Okay, so peeps, Parrot Planet on Facebook. Uh, they're located in Sacramento, California. I always used to call it Sacred Tomato. I don't know why I did that. Sacred Tomato. Yes, we're, we're at 4819 J Street in East Sacramento. Um, having a good time. We are closed Mondays, but we're open uh, uh, all of the other days of the week. Uh, that's, that's, that's fantastic. You guys, you know, you, you are second to none in how you do it with your birds and the people, you know, the whole mix. You know, the families yeah, that the birds you. go to. And all I would like for you to share with us also now regarding free flight you guys you're part of a group that actually takes your birds outside to some big big huge empty spaces fields and things of that nature and you let them go winging off into the skies share yes. what that's about with us please um, that's probably um, my favorite thing I would say my favorite thing that I do. Um, uh, I am actually a member of uh, West Wings Free Flight 
club here. Um, we're again, you know, focused in more <clears throat> of Northern California. Some of us in Sacramento, Vallejo, uh, Grass Valley, San Francisco, that area. And so I became interested in that um, a couple of years ago. And I thought, wow. I remember being a little girl sitting in Marine World in Redwood City, California at the bird shows. And I always wanted to stay in the bird shows. And at the end of the show, um, they had macaws, they had cockatoos. And I said, oh, I love those red macaws. And they would, those birds would fly around. And at the end, one lucky guest would get to raise the hand and be the one picked that the bird flies and lands on them. And I tried my hardest every time to be that person. And I didn't get picked. And so I said, I'm going to do that all by myself without a theme park one day. And I did, I'm of course not performing a show. I'm actually just outside with my two green wings who I love immensely. And we go out on generally Sundays and we do let people come out that would like to come and enjoy it as well. Uh, but we go out Sunday, depending weather conditions and the heat of summer, we may go earlier. And there's a bunch of us that go out and we have several macaws in the group, a few cockatoos and I think on Amazon here and there, but primarily we have a lot of large, colorful, beautiful macaws, and we go as a group, and we try to do it as safe as we possibly can, um, and 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 there is, you know, say a little bit of safety in numbers too. So we go out, and um, I don't force my birds to fly or tell them they have to fly when we get there. Part of going for them is the experience. They love the car ride. They love the theme music. They love talking the whole way there and when we get there it's kind of like i'm hanging out with my birds with some of my friends who are also hanging out with their birds and my birds have their own perch and i take them out of their crates and put them on the perch and a lot of times they preen themselves they preen each other they argue with each other and then if they feel like it they'll get up and go and take a couple big laps and start flying and they go together and sometimes they go as a large group and so it's kind of like just they're at liberty outside with us hanging out with other macaws and, and, and having the freedom and ability to get up and fly if they want to. And they generally always choose to fly. Um, and we have a great time watching them, but, um, it's, it's, it's when I got started doing free flight, I, I was pretty nervous, but I kept saying to myself, I really want my birds, um, to have the most least restrictive environment in captivity that I as a human can provide. And for me, I feel better um, seeing them out there, even if it's just once or twice a week. It, they are so happy when they're flying together. And seeing uh, my male and my female macaws flying together is magnificent and beautiful and wonderful. And it's a great weekly reminder of being alive being in the universe, being on the planet, and and just seeing something so spectacular that like you just don't see all the time, and the noise from their wings flapping and the calling out that they do to each other, um, it, it's just magnificent, and it, it fills me up. I think it fills them up too. They haven't told me, but they appear very happy when they're out there. Um, so it's just a wonderful thing, and for me, I you know birds my whole life been around birds born into family with birds that for me it's just it's the best thing ever and um yes there are risks and i don't recommend anybody just try going outside and letting the bird fly around um that's not what we do and it starts when they're babies and there's a lot of mentorship and training and education and it's something to not be taken lightly. Um, I'm glad so, you're mentioning this. I'm going yeah, on. Yeah, just it's these birds are, are different. They were raised to do this, and the training is is um, something that we do every single day. And that's that training I talk about with the recall and just the having fun together. Um, I don't really even like calling it training because it never feels like training to me, um, and I don't think it feels that way to them. Um, but it, it's not something I just decided to go outside one day and, hey, go out there, you guys. It was something that was very strategic, and we would need a whole another seven hours to talk about it maybe. But but it um, it's great for me. I enjoy it. It's not for everybody. But, you know, there's alternatives. Batting cages. Yeah, batting cages are a lot of fun to fly your parrots in and totally, totally safe. Um, and also flying around in your house it can be safe too you know there's safety precautions you have to take inside of a home even but um the gift of flight the beauty of flight i just love it for me i love it for my birds and um it's not for everybody but um 
it's it's something to look into. It's something if somebody is interested, it's something to take very seriously. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of my time, um, and I'm happy to spend that time because it, it's my passion and what I love, and it's for them as well as me. That's fantastic. Well, something just came to mind when you were talking about you know having the birds fly around in the home. I the one flag that comes up for me, and I say this too with respect, mm-hmm. is windows. Windows, ceiling fans mm-hmm. are a big deal. Cooking, um, cooking in on the oven, and and a bird that can fly to you. You know, when my birds are home with me, when I'm cooking, they're outside in their flight or they're in a cage because they're gonna come see me, especially if I'm cooking. Uh, but windows, um, when I'm training my babies and when these little babies are trying to fly around my house later on, um, I close my curtains. Um, I have two sets of curtains um for that reason um but generally my birds that i'm training you know for free flight or birds that i'm letting fly around they generally can if you teach them about the windows they can figure it out pretty fast but the ceiling fans are horrible um they can cause serious bodily harm to a bird that you may not think is going to fly up that high it's kind of like it will happen when you don't expect it. It will happen when you're too comfortable. So there's a lot of hazards within the home. You just have to kind of baby proof it like you would a baby that's starting to crawl. Right. Uh, you know, that type of thing. But yeah, or flying out the door. So if you have children in the home, you want to secure everybody and you want to secure your predatory animals too that um the poor things it's so tempting for a cat to maybe see a bird flutter by. You know, can't blame the cat so much. Um so there's just a lot of things definitely that I think you would have to do to put some safeguards in place in order to even fly inside your home. Okay, well I want to back up just a little bit here because I want to make sure that the that you guys out there are real clear that what we're talking about here regarding birds flying around inside is you're starting out with babies, right? You're not taking a 20-year-old macaw. Right. Okay, or an 18 year old Amazon and going, okay, we're going to teach you how to fly around inside the house here. Don't even go there, peeps. We're talking about babies. Yeah, Yeah, I would do it with babies, younger birds. Now, you can have your older birds learn slowly. A bird that's been clipped 20 years, that's a huge, huge learning curve for that bird. And it's really important to remember the basics of fledging in the wild. Um, how birds fledge and how important it is for them to learn um, to fly. So if a bird hasn't fledged, and let's face it, a lot in the pet industry have not, it is a huge learning curve. Can it be done by, it sure could, but it is more difficult, it is harder, and, and a lot of times an older bird doesn't understand what you wanted to do. They may not even know how their wings even work at that point. So for an older bird, um, you just have to be, a lot more careful and mindful um but but yeah teaching a bird to fly as a baby is a much different thing for sure but yeah that's what i'm thinking that probably that's that's the route that i really recommend to you guys out there uh to to be safe because the last thing in the world you want to do mm-hmm. is have your bird you know lose it hit okay. a wall break his neck and he's done in a for in a heartbeat you know and i have heard of instances happening to people uh, within right. the cause of things like that happening so if you guys are lucky enough or fortunate enough to be able to adopt or get a baby bird or something uh i would get in touch with parrot planet i would get in touch with their facebook page and get in sure. touch with uh sarah here uh and it sounds to me like you're you know you're willing to to help people out now peeps one thing i want you to understand here all right and that is that we're broadcasting to 192 countries, so 10,000 calls a day, Parrot Planet isn't going to work, all right? So, you know, send, you know, maybe leave some information, feedback, questions, things like that. Email, on the, uh, good. On their, <laughs> on their Facebook page, you know, um, perhaps questions and things, and they'll get back to you when they can. Sarah, I want to ask you this. Would I'd like for you to, if you would, share with us some of the most awesome memorable moments that come to mind right now that you have 
been able to share with parents. Just certain things that, like, when you get to the point when one day somebody walks up to you and goes, Sarah, I really hate to break this news to you, but you're ready to hide your own Easter eggs, okay? Something that even when you're ready to do that, you're never, ever, ever going to forget. Do you have a couple stories that you'd like to share? Um, like wonderful stories with my parents? Yeah. Um, I see, for me, it all goes back to what I'm most excited about, and that's seeing them flying outside. So for me, I think the first flight Axel um, took ever, when I saw him flying like away from me, because he has to fly away from me in order to turn and come back to me. So when I see him flying away from me, I'm on the ground, like kind of jogging after him. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then I can really keep up and I'm like, come back. Okay, come on back, come on back. And I remember seeing him and he looked magnificent and, and amazing and grown up, but I was terrified at the same time. So I'm sort of going after him and he's a big, big, huge 1400 gram green wing. So he needs a minute to turn. And I remember when he came landing and, and at that point it's landing even on mom is hard. So when he landed on me, it's like he almost knocked me over and he, he just like kind of cuddled with me like a little, like a little baby bird. And he was as shocked at what he had just done as I was. And it was such a, and I just hugged him and, and then I gave him like, you know, a slice of mandarin and some nuts and, and just babied him. And it was just such a moment between he and I that really made me happy just to kind of see him grow up and fly away with me kind of jogging behind him, calling his name over and over and over. Um, so that was one really just um, kind of just really amazing thing for me, like on a personal level. But um, some of the other special moments have been maybe somebody calls me and says, can you come pick this bird up? It's abandoned. And I go pick it up and it's a little rusted cage with a big umbrella cockatoo with no feathers, no food, nothing. And then taking that bird and getting it rehabilitated and getting it into a home and seeing the bird a year or two later, I saw that umbrella cockatoo like a year or two later. And the bird had magnificent white, fluffy, soft feathers, sparkly eyes. And, and, you know, had put on all that weight, was being spoiled in love and never is going to go back to living abandoned in a little tiny inappropriate cage. So moments like that make it kind of worth it for me um, to, you know, to keep doing this kind of work. Um, you're living, makes- you're, you're living the dream of the heart, yeah. you, you know, and, and, and finally I'm able to do, be able to say the same thing. I do it a little bit differently, you know, but uh, as you far as, I, I, I mean, I just, I'd love the dickens out of these guys, you know, uh, if, uh, if there is such a thing as coming back, you know, as, 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 as an animal or something along those lines, I used to want to come back as a killer whale because I thought, you know, nobody's going to mess with me, even the great white sharks, you know, and then I went, you know what, a bird, you know, they yeah. can walk, they can fly, they can see better than any human being, and yeah. they have this beautiful ability to be able to show you that they know that you love them and the energy that they give back to your heart is just, it's, it's immeasurable, you know, and that's the one thing that has allowed me and other people that are really, really just full of love for these wonderful, wonderful spirits is that The day that you stop thinking with your head and you start living and thinking with your heart, that's when the animal kingdom is going to turn around and go, how you doing, man? (laughs) You know, I mean, that, that, that's it in a nutshell. And you're, and Sarah, you're doing it right, you know, and you go girl and you just keep doing it. And uh, I want to thank you very, very much. From the bottom oh, of my you. heart. I miss you, kiddo. You know. I miss you, too. You know you remind me of my Uncle Aldo. I always tell you that. I wish you were back in California. Yeah, well, I'm happy. I'm living my dream here in South Carolina, and I'm yeah. very, very happy. And I've um, got a lovely, lovely, wonderful other half here with me, oh, yeah. Diane. And uh, four, we got 46. Well, they have us. I've got them all right where they want me, so I know it's going to last a long, long time, you know? Right. That's yes. that's the good part of it. Okay, Sarah Fonda Walter from Parrot Planet and 
beautiful Sacramento, California. <laughs> I want to thank you very, very much, sweetheart. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And um, I would like to, uh, after the show, I want to talk to you about some uh, free flight things. And okay. uh, But anyway, peeps, thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope you really enjoyed it as much as I did and as much as I know Sarah did sharing this with you. If, if you couldn't feel her heart, you guys, then, you know, then you need to go and talk to somebody, okay? <laughs> Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, cake is good too. I like cake. Yeah. You know, yeah, cake. Yeah. If, it, if you have cake, then I'll come to the meeting. If you don't, well, you know, yeah. I, I'm really yeah. sorry, but I can't make it. So okay. thank you so very, very much. Good job, Fresca. Come on, Fresca. <clears throat> good job, Fresca. Girl. We would like to extend a sincere thank you to Tom Rowdy Bush, the creator of Rowdy Bush Foods. Find out the reasons Rowdy Bush Food is the right choice for keeping your birds healthy and happy. When nutrition is important, Rowdy Bush Premium Foods are second to none. Rowdy Bush Incorporated manufactures specialized bird foods. This manufacturing is a result of the research by an avian nutritionist, Tom Rowdy Bush. During his 16 years of nutritional research in the Department of Avian Sciences at the University of California, Davis, Tom studied a variety of birds, including 10 years of research on the nutritional requirements of companion birds. Mr. Rowdy Bush has generated most of the published nutritional research in pet birds. As far as pellets are concerned, Rowdy Bush is what we feed our flock exclusively here at the Global Nest Exotic Bird Sanctuary. Rowdybush.com. That's R-O-U-D-Y-B-U-S-H.com. You can order direct by calling them at 1-800-326-1726. Once again, 1-800-326-1726. Thank you.